can't forget. How you set me free? How you set me I can't free? Forget. I can't forget it. How you brought me out? How you brought me I can't out? Forget. I can't forget it. I can't forget. 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 You saved my soul. I can't forget. You made me whole. I can't forget. You delivered me. I can't forget. You set me free. I can't forget. 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 How you brought me out. I can't forget. How you brought me out. I can't forget. How you brought me out. I can't forget. 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 I can't forget
forget. I won't 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 forget. Where I was. I won't forget. When you found me. I won't forget. 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 Now you turn me around. I won't forget. I won't forget. I won't forget. Now you turn me around. I won't forget. 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 I won't forget how you saved me. I won't forget how you delivered me. I won't forget where you brought me from. I won't forget. 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 I can't forget it. I can't forget. 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 I can't forget.
He's been good to us all week long. He's been good to us all week long. He kept us another week. He covered us another week. He helped us another week. He helped us another week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, will you open your mouth? Hallelujah, will you open your mouth? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up, God. Higher than our circumstances. Higher than our situations. Higher than our frustrations, God. We lift you up, God. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. It's you, oh God. Only you deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Come on, if you come to give God praise, come on and open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and shout unto God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and press into his presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I might not feel like it, but thank you. Things might not be going well, but I thank you. May have gotten a bad report, but I thank you. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Anyhow. Hallelujah. Anyhow, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, oh God. Oh God, you are a good God. You are a mighty God. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our adoration. God, we lift you up on this morning. God, we pray that you have your way, oh God. 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 Have your way in this place, oh God. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place. You're welcome in this place, oh God. You're welcome in this place. 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 You're welcome here, oh God. Have your way in here, oh God. Have your way in this place, oh God. Oh God, heal in this place. Deliver in this place. Set free in this place, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we bind the enemy now that tries to attack the mind of your people. Loose that mind right now. Loose it right now in the name of Jesus. Remove any hindrances, oh God. Oh God, this is a free atmosphere, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Where we can be free to worship you. Free to lift your name up, oh God. Free to receive your word, oh God. Oh God, refresh your people today, oh God. Refresh us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we need a touch from you. Touch us, oh God. Touch us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Touch us in that sweet spot. Touch us in that place where you only know, oh God. Help us, oh God. We need your help, oh God. Without you, we are nothing, God. We can't do nothing, oh God. 
when we leave this place today oh god we don't want to leave the same way we came oh god we want to make a difference oh god we want to be effective oh god we want to bring glory to your name oh god in the name of jesus Oh, God, we give you glory, God. Oh, God, we thank you for answering our prayers. We thank you for hearing our prayers. Oh, God, the honor is yours, oh, God. The glory is yours, oh, God. It's all because of you, oh, God. It's all because of you, oh, God. We cast our cares at your feet today, oh, God, because you care for us, oh, God. We thank you for this privilege, oh, God. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us, oh, God, to come to your house. Oh God, to come before your feet, oh God. Oh God, we want to have an experience with you, oh God. Oh God, meet us here, oh God. We thank you for meeting us here, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, now we ask that you prepare our hearts, oh God. Prepare our minds, oh God, as we get ready to receive the word of God. Oh God, we ask that you bless our pastor, oh God. As he come forth with the word, God, let him say only what you would have him to say, oh God. Oh God, let your word go forth with clarity and conviction. You know what we need, oh God. Oh God, we ask that your Holy Ghost power ride on the word of God on this morning. Oh God, that you help us, oh God, with your word, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we know that you are able to do the miraculous, oh God. Oh God, you're able to do the impossible, oh God. Oh God, we pray for everyone that's in this place, oh God. Oh God, that you meet us and give us what we need, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and thank God. Praise God. Come on, clap those hands and give God to praise. Come on, praise the Lord, saints. Come on, praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. There was an old saint that, that's gone on to be with the Lord. Amen. We bless your name on today, Mother Elizabeth Anderson, when she would come into God's house, she would say, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Who alone is worthy, worthy to be praised, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be lifted up. We bless the Lord on today. Thank God for Mr. Green, my precious wife, Sister Jesse, Missionary College, the Deacon Brothers, the saints of God in the house on this morning. We bless the Lord for blessing us to see this brand new day. This is the Lord's day. This is the amen. It is marvelous in my eyes that God allowed us last Sunday. He gave us grace to be here this Sunday, and we are blessed. Amen. And so we thank God. Thank God for Deacon Holmes stepping in the door. Amen. We praise God for him. When the Bible says closer than a brother, he's closer. Then a brother, amen, and I praise God for him and his family, amen, praise the Lord. Reach over and get your Bibles and turn with me, please, amen, and, and, and brothers and sisters, I want you to put your seatbelts on, because what I say don't matter, it's what the book says. We're going to do a whole lot of reading, you know why? Because we have to combat all of the stuff that's going on in the church houses. We got to understand and praise God. As I said on the last time I stood in this pulpit, the message today is deliberate and is personal. That saints need to be taught the word of God. There's a lot of discouragement in the land today, even among God's people. We're living in a time now you just don't know who to trust. Amen. People that claim to be anointed sound like it, but it's not real. People that claim to know God sound like it, act like it, but it's not real. Amen. Praise the Lord. And only you'll know the real from the counterfeit. You got to be real. You'll be, be saying amen. And so we thank God for the word of God. You know, everything is changing now except the word of God. We had a song in the church that say everything's going down but the word of God. Peter said in heaven and earth. Uh, flesh and blood is going to get out of here. But the word of our God shall stand forever. You believe me? Say amen. Praise the Lord. Turn with me please to Hebrews chapter 1. Yesterday when I left you, we opened up a series of messages on the gathering. Amen. And I thank God for the gathering of the saints. Hebrews 1 and verse 1 said, God who at sundry times and diverse or strange various 
manners, spake in time past. Everybody shout time past. Underline that in your Bible. The past is the past. God spoke to Israel in the past. Now his attention is turned toward the church. Amen. That's why the Holy Ghost is here. He's making up the Gentile bride and the Jewish bride, all of the Jews that would believe on the Lord. And many of them right now are turning to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He said, God who had sundry times and diverse manners spake unto our fathers by the prophets hath in these last days underlined that. Because if you don't understand what time frame we're living in, praise God, listen, you need to wake up. Hallelujah. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself, huh? By himself purged or cleansed our sins and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. God's last word to this unregenerated, wicked world that we live in is Jesus Christ. Ain't nothing else, ain't nobody else coming. Hallelujah. He's been speaking, he spoke out of eternity to Israel, they turned a deaf ear, didn't they not? Didn't they not? He gave them the word. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you read in the 20th chapter of Exodus, God did not write the, he did not put the word in Moses' mouth to teach them people the Ten, ten Commandments. God spoke from Mount Zion to those folks. He told them, you, you get them, you tell them, I'm, I'm going to give them three days to get themselves together, to wash themselves, clean themselves, and appear before me. And when God stepped down, amen, praise the Lord, the Bible said the whole mountain was on smoke, looked like a furnace. And God spoke to those folks, amen. He gave them the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah. So they were the people that received the word of God, but God had hell with them, didn't he not? That almost like they went in one ear came out the other. These are the people that are fresh out of bondage, fresh, amen, praise the Lord, out of, out of the control of the enemy. God delivered them. He did miracle after miracle after miracle against Egypt's gods and praise God. So Israel had no excuse, amen. How many of y'all God here, I ain't talking about no medicine or no operation. How many of y'all God done touch you and heal you? Lift your hand. To the point where you know it was God. Did he have to do it? Does he have to do it now? But the Bible declares it's by the, of, of the Lord's mercies. That we are not because he don't let the devil take us out. He don't let no sickness take us out. He don't let no circumstance call. Uh, amen. And so I'm coming back now with what I, we started on last uh, the last time I was with you about the gathering of the saints. Notice now, there's two gatherings that are going to take place. Hallelujah, when it come, on God's time clock. The first one is when he called us out of our sins through the Holy Ghost and the Word. But there's a gathering coming where Jesus Christ is coming for his church. And I know you're laughing, but that's okay. It's a whole lot of folks laughed at Moses, but they weren't him. They went out in judgment. There's a whole lot of pope people in the apostles' day, amen, church folks that didn't believe what was preached and taught. Peter said they were willingly ignorant, talking about, oh, hey, God ain't came yet. Y'all holler about Jesus Christ is coming, and it's been a long time. Everything's going like it's going, and like it was at the beginning. And Peter said, for this day, willingly are ignorant. Now, I want to speak in down into your hearts, and I want to encourage every one of you saints that's discouraged and disgusted with what we see in among us. Because everything that's talking about Jesus ain't, don't belong to Jesus. Jesus Christ said, pray, he, he gave us the definition of a real saint in Matthew 7, 21. And he targeted at church folks. He said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God, heaven. Only he that does the will, the will, the will of God. See, going to church is okay, but not having church in you, you ain't hitting on nothing. 
You see what I'm saying? So God's got one date that's on his calendar right now. The next greatest thing is when Jesus Christ, God got a time where he's going to send the son to get his bride. Yes, sir. Amen. And many don't believe that, but praise God. Hey, uh, in Psalms 50, the foundational text, Psalms 50 in verse 1 is the foundational text when we're dealing with the, the, him coming and gathering the saints. Now, when you read this all the way through, God has identified the, the saints, and he's identified the ones that halfway in there and halfway out, and then he identifies the hypocrite. But God, he, he, it's, it's strange that he got to identify himself to these people. I thank God for the summons because what we're getting ready to read now is both, it's both natural and it's also prophetic. Looking forward to looking forward to when he's coming for his saints. Psalms 50 and verse 1, the mighty God, even the Lord has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down of the saint thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous. He shall call to the heavens from above. That's prophetic. And to the earth. That's prophetic. That he may judge his people. Gather my saints together. Notice what he didn't say gather Israel. He singles out the ones that are truly honoring him. And this prophetic psalm is dealing with the people then and dealing with the people now when it comes to sacrifice. Y'all with it this morning? Because we're not going to read it all, but he talks about those that were just, they brought offering. He said, I'm not going to judge you according to what you done brought. I'm not going to rebuke you because you brought the offering. I'm judging you because of your attitude. Hallelujah. Amen. Those are the ones that's kind of halfway in there. But they did what Jesus Christ warned the church at Ephesus. They left their first love. They forgot. They forgot they was offering him, but what they weren't thankful. They didn't reverence God. And then the last part, part, few verses in there, it talks about the hypocrite pretending to be right, pretending to be a saint. Hallelujah. But amen now. But that last verse in there, he said, whosoever offer praise glorifies me. And to him that orders his steps aright, how in my word? To him will I show the salvation of God. Deliverance is for the saints. Hallelujah. When you study this, and I don't want you just to read it. I want you to study this. He said, praise God, when you get this thing right, you shall call upon me and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Why bless his name? And so the, the foundational text for this part of the series is that fifth verse. Give me that fifth verse, son. Psalm 50 and 5, gather my saints Read it. together unto me. Unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Notice sacrifice. A covenant and sacrifice. A covenant is made by two individuals. Amen. And in order to seal that covenant, somebody got to die. They had to sacrifice an animal because both of those, when they cut that covenant, they had to divide those pieces and walk up and down in, the, in, in, in that blood and, and to pronounce the blessing and the curse of disobeying and going against that covenant. They did that. That's the way they did it then. Ain't that what God did with Abraham? He told him what the offer. Abraham separated them pieces. He walked, amen, praise God. But before he walked up, he didn't walk up and down the pier. God initiated that. And praise God. I thank God for Abraham. Praise the Lord. You know, birds like me, don't they now? But that man fought all of the fowls of the air all day. Hallelujah. And then the Bible declares God put him, a, put him in a deep sleep. And when he seen a, a, a representation of God, he saw a smoking furnace. And that furnace came down and walked up and down in pieces. And he said, truly blessing. I'm going to bless you. Hallelujah. 
So notice, give me that one more time. Gather my saints together. Those that have made a sacrifice. A covenant with me by sacrifice. Read. Psalm 50 and 5. Gather my saints together unto me. Read. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Read. 6. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness. The what? The heavens shall declare his righteousness. Read it. For God is judge himself. God who? Is judge. He's who? Himself. Just like Jesus Christ in, Matt, in, in Hebrews 1. He purged our sin by himself. All right, the covenant is in two parts. We, you and I, are in the dispensation of grace. I'm going, I'm revering to bring us up to speed, you see. We're in the dispensation of grace. You know, by grace you're saved through faith. Amen, that be of God. It is not a work lest any man should boast. boast Ephesians 2 and 8, hallelujah. But then he also give the stipulations of you being saved in that 10th verse. Hallelujah, about the works. We don't work to be saved. We work because we saved. We work for God because we saved. Hallelujah. Everything, anything other than that is futile. Hallelujah. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. We can't do good until he makes us good. How many believe what I'm saying here? Hallelujah. And so notice now, the covenant that God cut with them was twofold. He had a part. And they had a part. The covenant he cut with us is twofold. His part, Jesus Christ pronounced it when he walked upon the face of this earth. John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him should not perish. I'm sacrificing my son. My son is going to die for your sin in order to pave the way and open the door where you can come back to me. Why bless his name? Hallelujah. God fulfilled that through Jesus Christ. I'm a part in it. Amen. Pray God. If there'll be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice. Now both of us got to die. He died to save us. Got up to make sure we got what, get what he gave for us. And then we, in turn, when we get saved or what they call it, born again, we die to sin. We die to the flesh. And the only way the devil can use you, he got to come through your flesh. That's why the Bible declares God gave us the power through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God to keep the flesh under. You believe your servant. God, 1 Corinthians 9, 27. I, the spirit man, keep under my body. And I bring my body under subjection or submission to the word. Well, bless his name. So I'm a part in the covenant. It's to be a living sacrifice. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, not your spirit. If your spirit ain't right, you ain't going to present the body right. But that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant. And be not conformed. And this is how we bring the flesh under. We take God's word and clean ourselves. John 5. Ten and three, you're clean to obey in the word. You believe me, say, but hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're in the dispensation of grace. We're in the time where all you to be saved, you hear the gospel, you repent of your sin, come to Jesus. He's not forcing anybody. But God got a time frame. Yes, sir. For grace. It's going to step right on out of him when he take the church out and the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Amen. I don't mean to laugh at that. I, I want Ephesians 1. Turn with me, please. Brothers and sisters, what we're reading today, I want to remind you that we only got a little while left. And if you are a student of God's word and you're paying attention to what's going on, you're able to equate what we see on the earth and what we see in the church house. To let you know it's about time for us to get up out of here. Men are playing with this thing. We got too many cowards in the pulpit. Well, bless his name. Cowards and charlatans. If you ain't preaching to people to get right with God, you're, you're, you're a hypocrite. And you're, and you're a coward. Ephesians 1 and 10. Read. The dispensation of grace is here now. But God got a time when he's going to end the dispensation of grace. Read it. Of time, Give me that verse one more time. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time. Read. He might gather together in all one. 
He going to do what? Things. He going to gather together in one. In one. In what? One. Now remember now, when you got saved and I got saved, we became sheep of his pasture. Jesus Christ stood on the face of this earth, looked at his disciples and said in John 10, 16, other sheep I got which are not of this Jewish fold. Them also I must bring. They shall hear my voice. And it's going to be one fold. One shepherd. Yes, sir. And he fulfilled that. Why? I'm in him. I'm not a wolf in sheep's clothing. And I sure ain't no goat. Hallelujah. Read that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, the fullness of time, look this way here. The fullness of time is going to be fulfilled. What we're reading here is the a prophetic in our future because somewhere on the face of this earth, during the dispensation of grace, the last man, the last one, whoever it is, going to hear the gospel except Jesus Christ and brothers and sisters, that's it for us. Jesus is going to step out of eternity for his church. Why? The dispensation of grace is going to be over. And when we leave this world, a very instant we leave this world, judgment is going to start. The tribulation period is going to start, but that's for another message. Read that in the fullness of the dispensation of time, he, God, might gather together all the Read. In one, all things in Christ. In who, church? So you see, you got to be in Christ. Not talking about Christ. Not have your name on a church roll. You got to be in Christ. You be be saved by the Bible declare that when he saves us, he cleans us. And he makes us new. You be be saved. How many of y'all like new stuff? Hallelujah. If any man be in Hunts and the Ridge 5 and 17, why you call them scriptures? Because you, you ain't right. I ain't right. The book is right. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us unto himself. Read. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Notice now, the, 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 when a saint dies, their body goes to the dust, but their soul and their spirit goes into the presence of the Lord. And when he say, bring together death which is in earth, heaven and in earth, that's what he's talking about there. Hallelujah. We got a witness, amen, praise the Lord, letting us know that God has got a time. He's going to come for us. Come on with that book. Read. Even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. In Jesus, we got an inheritance. Read. Being predestinated. Being what, church? Read. According to the purpose of him who worketh all things after, after the counsel of his own will. After the what? Counsel of his own will. W I L L. Read. That we should be to the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. Who first well, glory to God. I, I'm on my job this morning. And I'm pulling all y'all. I'm clocking all y'all in. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody shout praise the Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm pulling you in. I'm clocking you in this morning. Hallelujah. Because you run around here praise God. Worried about this and worried about that. When you ought to spend that time praising and worshiping God. Even when the enemy comes. You know God will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Why? He promised. He made a promise. Paul, he made a promise. I'm with you even to the end of the world. Whether well, the end of the world ain't yet, amen. But that means he's still with us. Read. Who first trusted in Christ. Read. And whom ye also trusted. After that, ye heard the word of truth. You see how powerful and how significant the word of God is for you to hear the word of God and obey the word of God. See, now look this way here. The devil knows God's word. God's word, he knows God going to back up what he said. The devil knows that. And he knows there ain't no kind of way he can stop it. Now he can try to keep you from hearing, but even then he can't do it. He'll send the word your way even though you turn a deaf ear, amen, to make it therefore, like Psalm 51 said, you'll be clear when you speak and justified when you judge. Read. The gospel of your salvation. Read. In whom also after that ye believe, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. I don't need the Holy Ghost. That's you talking. You'll never be able to live this life in your own strength. And you know what? I told you last time I was with you. What we need to do, what God's people need to do, is go back to when you was hungry, when he, before he filled you with the Holy Ghost. And you go back and you start doing what you know you was doing, amen, in order to get the refreshing. You may be saying, ah, wow, what you got today? You're going to need more. I'm going to need more. We're going to need more. You'll be 
it say amen. Why bless his name? Come on with it. 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance. That's, that's the earnest now. The Holy Ghost is the earnest of our inheritance. Hey, we got an inheritance. Boy, that's a real good place for somebody to shout glory. Hallelujah. What you got down here is insignificant. Hallelujah. What is a house? Car, money. What is all that, pray God, when we talk about sin and eternity? with the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And my Bible says in, hallelujah, I believe it's in the Ecclesiastes that in his presence is fullness of the, we don't know no joy. The little bit we do know God came in through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pray God he's in us to cause us to be joyful. Read, read, read. Until the redemption of the purchased possession. Notice, underline that the redemption, the buying back of the calling in. You know, if you take something to the Pawn shop, pawn it. You don't get it. You don't get it back until you pay the money. Amen. Huh? What do they call that? You gonna redeem this? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Until the redemption of the purchase possession. All right. Let, let's look. I want you to look this way here. There's a lot of preaching and teaching for men that's got half the alphabet behind their name preaching and teaching this word without the Holy Ghost. And there's a whole big debate on whether the church is going through the tribulation period. What they fail to realize is, Brother Holmes, that the tribulation period is God's judgment poured out upon the wicked. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. But I got a whole lot of Bible that I can bring before you. But we just going to get three witnesses this morning. The first one is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tell me in Luke 21. Hallelujah. And we ain't going to read it all. But Luke 21 it coincides with, amen, Matthew 24. Talking about the last days, Jesus Christ said. There will be false prophets, false teachers, earthquakes in diverse places. Amen. Walls and rumors of all. All of that we find in Luke. Amen. But in that 25th verse, listen to what this book says. And there shall be signs in the sun and, and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth. Distress of nations with perplexity. Now, dear God, dear God, can anybody refute that? Ladies and gentlemen, we got, we got trouble. This world, according to Romans 8, this world is grown in pain and to be delivered. Let's read. The sea and the waves roar, tornadoes, hurricanes. Wake up, brothers and sisters. That Jesus is speaking to us. Let us know it's time to get right with God and stay right with God. Let's read. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the face of the earth. Or coming on earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And that's talking about the principalities, the wicked spirits in high places. God got a time to set that in order. And then tell the son, you see the son of man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now watch this here, this 28th verse. And when ye, when these things begin to come to pass, then what? Then what? So you see, he's telling us, praise God, that this is going to happen. Ain't nothing going to stop it. But when you see the things that I told you was going to take place. Now when you read Matthew and you read Luke's account, Everything that Jesus Christ said, especially in the book of Matthew, he told them that the temple would not, that would not be left one stone upon another. Jerusalem would be level. Hallelujah. That's already taking place. And he said that your people shall be scattered. Didn't he scatter them? Didn't he scatter them? But brothers, in May of 1948, just like God told Isaiah, I'm going to send them to the four corners of this earth, but brother Edna said, I'm going to bring them right back to that nation. They're going to get in that land. And this year, a, a nation shall be born in a day. Why well, bless his name? Nobody in Israel was not recognized as a nation. But in one day, <laughs> whew, hallelujah, the star David was raised up over Tel Aviv. Why well, bless his name? Just like he said. And when that took place, this world start ticking their last times off. Drop down. 29 and 30 talks, 31 talks about the fig tree. 
the fig tree blooming. You know summer is not. But notice in that 31st verse. So likewise ye when you see these things come to pass. Know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Verily I say unto you. This generation. Now look this way. He wasn't talking about Peter and James and John. Them this uh, generation. He was talking about the very generation that see and experience the things that he said was going to take place in the last day. That generation shall not. Let's read. This generation, and I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart. Everybody shout hard. Everybody shout hard. Everybody start, look at me this morning and shout, my heart. He's talking to saints concerning the end time, what they would see, and telling them, don't you let the world or don't you let the devil and show don't let no false prophet lull you to sleep and get you in a place where you think everything you got it going on and what God said ain't going to happen. Brothers and sisters, we're looking at it. And we're still running from the truth. You may not think so, but I'm sure preaching myself happy. This is what this is my go-to book here. Hallelujah. Notice what he said. Take heed to yourself, lest any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting. That's talking about rowdiness, looseness, and wickedness. Surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of dislike. Notice, that's one that every one of us qualify for. Cares of this life. What we going to eat? What we going to drink? What we going to put on? How I'm going to pay my bill? Come on, talk to me. Hallelujah. When he told you, pray God, Jesus Christ told us. He said, our heavenly father already know the things that we have need of. You believe me? Hey, man, now if he know and don't pay me the need, somebody been deceived. And Jesus is a lie. But before that get cool in your ears, he don't lie. He is the truth. He don't tell the truth. He is the truth. Let's read, brothers and sisters. Notice now, take heed to yourself lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfing and drunken in the cares of this life. And so, everybody shout so. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snatch that it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Notice now, I want you to pay real close attention and we're going to read this together. This is one passage that tells us that, pray God, it's possible if you're ready when he come, you won't experience everything that he said in them upper chapter verses there. He said, watch and, watch and, watch ye therefore and pray always. For what? That you may be accounted worthy to what? Now, if you couldn't escape, then somebody's wrong. This is as plain as a nose on your face. He's telling them, if you're ready when, you, when I come, these things are going to be happening. to give you a, amen, praise God, a heads up on just how close it is for me to come for you. He said, watch therefore and pray that you, me, us, may be accounted worthy to what? To escape all of these things that shall come up on the face of the earth. And stand before the Son of Man. See, we just not going to escape and be, amen, floating around in, in the air somewhere. He said to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Now, we can't do that unless we go up to meet him. Come on, talk to me. Hallelujah. Now, that's one witness. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, there's another. There's another John the Apostle in Revelation 14. And I want y'all to jot these scriptures down. Don't take my word for nothing. You go back and study, amen, and God will show you what he has showed me. In, John, in the Revelation 14, at that 14 verse, I, I'm not going to read it. But John, say I saw a cloud, a white cloud. And that cloud was sending down and said, one sat up on that cloud. Hallelujah. And he had in his hand a sharp sickle. Now that sickle is the same thing that we read about when John saw him in Revelation 1. He had a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. How many of y'all don't know what a sickle is? It's a hook-like blade that they use to cut down the, the, the wheat and the chaff for the harvest. Hallelujah. That's his word. 
He came down with that sickle and then another angel came from around the altar. He said, thrust in thy sickle and reap for the harvest of the earth is ready. It's ready. That's you and that's me that are ready. And as Bible says, when he thrust in that sickle, the earth was reaped. But you read that 17 all the way to the end of that chapter, he talked about two other angels. One of them had a sickle, and it talked about the judgment because we know it's judgment because when that angel thrust in his sickle, he took the grapes and cast them into the wine press of the wrath of God. So there's a gathering right there of the wicked. But Jesus is going to gather up. So John prayed God, God, John testifies to us that when he comes, he's coming for the saints. But well, there's one that you're familiar with. First Thessalonians 4 and 16. Turn with me. I'm going to preach on while you read on. First Thessalonians 4 16. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the hey, y'all look this way here. With the shout now. The shout. Remember now John 10, my sheep. The, the wicked would not hear this. Only the saints. You know why? Because deep calls unto the deep. Sister, Sister Jewel. Sister Jewel. When he speak only we going to hear. Just like in this dispensation of grace. Everybody that hears the gospel and comes to Jesus Christ. Surrender their, their lives. And I, I might I add. Let, uh, make Jesus the Lord of their life. They'll hear that voice. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Hallelujah. With the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in there. And so, everybody shout and so. And so, in other words, y'all look this way here. Brothers and sisters, this is when God going to close the book on the church. As far as their existence down here. Yes, sir. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another. And that's what I'm doing this morning. Because of all of the discouragement. And what we see, what we hear. And all this false preaching, false teaching. And false Christians. Hallelujah. See, you can't have a true without a, a, a counterfeit. Without a true to, to pattern off of. Oh, glory to God. So Jesse, I found that, that verse that you read for me one time about fearfulness has surprised the hypocrite. He was talking about hypocrites in God's house. It's in Isaiah. Hallelujah. But notice now, that's three witnesses that letting us know that before hell hit, before God judged this world, he's going to take the true believers out. And I, what is a true believer? What is a saint? Them that obey God. In everything. How you live. How you give, how you act, how you react, how you think. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God, amen. But let me give you one more, amen. Praise God. I feel generous. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, turn with me. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1, the Bible declared Paul the apostle gave us an assurance. Praise the Lord that God got a time he's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. He's going to separate the wicked from the saints. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and second, give me that. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse 1. Second Thessalonians 2 and 1. Read. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Notice Jesus Christ. Notice not the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The coming. Coming for what, church? Excuse me. Coming for who, church? Read. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read it. And by our gathering together See unto there? him. What is he going to do something when he come? Gathering together He's going to gather our gathering to our, our. Not them. The our gathering together unto the saints. Read. That ye be not soon shaken in mind. Read. Or be troubled. Read. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter. Now y'all look this us. way here. That mess that got over there that Peter addressed about they talking about where's the promise of his coming. That junk started spreading through the entire, all through Asia Minor. Every one of them churches, they, the devil used somebody to spawn that mess. Amen. Praise the Lord. They say, that's why we going through the tribulation and already came. We in the tribulation. The devil is a lie. Notice now, the remainder of that chapter, you read it. He deals with the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is the judgment of the Lord. Amen. 
Not the judging of the saints, the judgment of the law, that you be not soon shaken as from in, uh, a letter that come from us as if the day of the Lord is. Read it, son. That the day of Christ is at hand. Read. Three, let no man deceive you Don't by you enemy. Don't you let no preacher deceive you. Read. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Look this way. Men been falling away ever since, amen, the, God, the, the gospel that came on the scene and people and God say, backsliding ain't just not started. Why well, bless his name? It's amazing how we exchange God. For something to please our flesh. So he talks about, the, he's the brother Holmes, he talks about the separation of our gathering together and the day of judgment, the day of the Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all with it this morning? Y'all with it this morning? Hallelujah. Now why is it important for you to live holy? Why is it important for you to keep your mind... I, I said and I made a mistake on the last time I was with you. I was talking about a horizontal salvation, but no, we need a vertical salvation. Huh? Look up. What did he tell him in Luke? When you see all of these things happen, look up for your redemption going now. Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, we don't pay to be a son of God. We don't pay to be a saint. When we get saved, Sister Sandra, God makes us saints. Now, where you go from there is you. That's why we got a whole lot of New Testament telling us, not suggesting, but telling us how to live. Brother John, we got all this New Testament from Jesus Christ all the way to his apostles that wrote these epistles telling us if you want to be ready, you're going to obey this book here. Huh? Luke 6 and 46, why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the same that I say, look out once in Christ and never out. Y'all with it this morning. There's a price that we got to pay. There's a price that we got to pay. First, uh, first John, chapter one and verse one, uh, uh, chapter three and verse one. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knew don't know us because they didn't know Him. Beloved, now are we the when? Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, not if, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Somebody get that for me. First John 3 and verse, God, amen, but give me that third verse. And every man that had hope, this hope No, in him, back up right there. Back up to the second verse. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. Read. And it does not yet appear what we shall not be. Not yet, but it's going to appear. But we know. God gonna show who's his. Read. But we know that when he shall appear, Read. we shall be like him. Read. For we shall see him as he is. Read. And every man that had this hope in him. Read. That's a purifying himself. process now. That's a sanctifying process. You got to be separated from the things of this world. You got to be separated from the attitude of the world. The world don't care nothing about God. The school system is grinding them out. Souls without number. And they're going to have to give account of every soul they corrupted. Every politician. Every wicked preacher. That refused to tell the truth. Everybody's going to give it. Huh? You are your brother's keeper. Come on with it. Even as he is pure. Read. Or whosoever committed sin transgresses My also the law. My God. Talk to church folk. Now who is he talking to? Who is he writing to? The church. But notice now, we are sons of God now. We are daughters in God now. The purifying process, he said, give me that third verse one more time. So it's just I want 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. 1 John 3 and 3, and every Read. man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is now, pure. Now, son, I, I want 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. I want that right now. Here's our part in the covenant, brothers and sisters. This is what we do after he saved us. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5 and 14, amen, praise the Lord. Jesus Christ died for us. The love of God constrains us to keep us, amen. Y'all look this way here. I'm talking to everybody that's saved now. When, when a thought came in your mind to do wrong, did God let you do, think on that without convicting you? Talk to me. Now, what is that for? Don't do that. Like, like we used to tell our kids, op. What God is saying, op. No, sir. No, sir. You bring shame on the name of Jesus Christ. Don't do that now. Don't you do that. Read. Corinthians 5.14, for Read. the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all. And he did die for all. Read. 
then were all dead. Free! And that he died for all, and that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. Read it. But unto him which died oh, for y'all them. read this this morning. And rose again. Hold it. He died for all that we which live should not henceforth, after we get saved, live unto ourselves. Ain't that the way it read? Did you just read that? <laughs> but unto him, read, son. She died for them. Read. And rose again. Read. Wherefore henceforth know we know man after the flesh. Hold what you got right there. It's 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. This is our part in the covenant. Read. What? Know ye not. Don't you know? Ain't your pastor, told, ain't your prophet told you that you can't live in sin and be a child of God? You believe been saved by. Read. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Read it. You? Which ye have of God. Who, who we get the Holy Ghost from? Now, now answer this question. Now where is the Holy Ghost? Read. We have of God. And, ye and are you, not your me, own. us, that say we are not our own. Read. For ye are bought with a price. Come on, first Thessalonians 4 and 3, son. Read. Come on Therefore, with it. Therefore glorify God Do in your what? body. Glorify because God. I don't belong to myself. I don't take these hands, praise God, and dishonor God. Why blessing that y'all look this way here? It may sound wrong, but it's the honest to God truth. God hates fornication. God hates lying. God hates adultery. God hates deception. God hates discourse. You name it, we do it with this tongue or with these members. And God hates it. Coming from his people. Now, when Israel got wrong, did he, did he just pat him on the back? Like the mentality that folks got, not God is, hey man, he's setting up in heaven in his heavenly rocking chair and he's rocking back and forth and winking at his little kids when they do wrong. Listen, this New Testament, Paul warned them and he warned us. Hey man, praise the Lord on Mars Hill, he warned them folks. He said, pray God at the time of your, Acts 17 and 31, at the time of your ignorance, God. Every one of y'all wink at me. Come on, wink at me. Why? He knew you don't know no better. That's why you serving wood, hay, and stone. The thing that you sacrifice, you sacrifice in the devils. That's still going on today among church folks. But, that, but God in these last days is demanding men everywhere to repent. For he's appointed a day that he's going to judge every one of us by that one man that he's, he raised from the dead. Come on with it. Therefore, glorify God in your body Read. and in your spirit, Read. which are God. Who belong? Who we belong to? Who your body belong to? Who your who you owe a sacrifice? On Romans twelve and one, present your body. Who do we owe our bodies to? In Romans six, he tells us in six and twelve, let not sin rule in our mortal bodies, that we should obey sin. Yeah. Hallelujah! Why he made us free? Romans six and eighteen. Being then made free, we become the servants of righteousness. Free from what? Free from the control of sin. And God has fixed it in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Amen. And God ain't going to let the devil tempt us above what we're able to resist. Come on out of here. And the devil just kept coming. And the devil just kept coming. Well, if you quit hanging around all that bunch, amen, when you ain't in church, that'll stop that. Hallelujah. Now, I'm a part in this commitment now. This is a twofold covenant now. He gave Jesus Christ. Now that we done got saved, we don't live unto ourselves. Hallelujah. Now, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, he said, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Y'all look this way here. The battle starts here. The devil cannot touch your spirit. He's got to come through here. And the Bible says in Romans 6, To whomsoever you yield your members to obey, his servant you are to whom you obey, whether of sin under death or of obedience under righteousness. But God be thanked that we were the servants of sin. Amen. But now we're the servants of the living God. Huh? And so Paul, the apostle, I mean Peter, the apostle, goes to the root. He gets down to the root of the matter. What you thinking on? You lift your mind down in the valley of the devil or take it. People ain't going crazy just to be going to crazy. I'm talking about church folks now. Hallelujah, you know right, but you entertain that thought and then when that thing gets down in here, now you got a problem. You ain't got a problem with me and you got a problem with God. 
Why are you doing what he warned them in, that, in, 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 in Psalms 50? You're playing around with your soul. I said it before, I'm going to say it one more time for my own edification in Jesus Christ. Let's look at this. this let's look at this altar here. It's a, a big pool of fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you're looking at men, women, boys, and girls being dragged, screaming and kicking toward that fire and being thrown in. I guarantee you, for the rest of your life, that, that'll be on your mind there. And when the devil try to get you to go wrong, you're up. I, I know. Mm -mm, no, sir. I know what I saw. Now, you know what's wrong with us? We don't get a crystal clear picture of what it means to be damned to the pit. Hallelujah. Sometime back, amen, praise the Lord, God gave me a message about until the harvest. In Matthew 13, hallelujah, where the tares then got themselves among the wheat. Jesus knew what was going to take place in the last day. The apostles knew that that would be those that come in among us. Where you at, son? 1 Thessalonians 4 and 3. Read. For this is the will of God. This is our part in the covenant. For this is the will, huh? Romans 12 and 1, 12 and 2. Amen. Praise God. Don't be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the ruling of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect W-I-L-L. -L, not W-I-L-L-S. So I don't like you, you nitpick. Well, you quit lying, I wouldn't have to nitpick. But when we tell him the lie like God got a permission, will, that's a lie from the pit. In order to make people feel comfortable doing what they're doing and still calling themselves a child of God. Come on out of here. How many of y'all believe that Jesus is coming for a church? Let's see your hand. Come on, son. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, Read. that ye should abstain from fornication. Read. That every one of spiritually you, and naturally. Read. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel to in do sanctification. What? Possess his vessel. You are a vessel. I'm a vessel. What did you use a vessel for? To contain something, to carry something. What did you read, Sister Jesse? That we are the temple of God. Who he put in us, we can everywhere we go, light steps on the scene when we step on the scene. Everywhere we go, light. We are light bearers. Why? The light is in us. And every time God, and God always put us in the midst of darkness. Why? So that men would see the light and be drawn to your testimony. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, and that every one of us should know. How to possess his vessel. Possess his vessel in what? Sanctification. In what church? See you there? And what? Honor. We sanctify ourselves in order to honor God. We separate ourselves from sin. We don't follow the spirit of the world. And we sure don't follow the spirit of the worldly church house. So just I want Ephesians 4 and you get that right there. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 and 17. Come on with it. This I say therefore. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord. Read. That ye henceforth walk That from not now since you done got time. saved. Walk. Since he done called you out of idolatry. Since you done got saved. That you read. That ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk. Read. In the vanity of their mind. Vanity of their mind. Read. Having the understanding darkness. Read it. Being alienated from the life of God you, through the ignorance. Alienated means you're cut off. Read it. Through the ignorance that is in them. Through the what, church? Talk to me, somebody. Through the what? Not that the word of God ain't went forth, but they just turn a deaf ear. Read it. Because of the blindness of their heart. Read. There it is right there. Y'all look this way here. In 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, in the third verse, Paul the apostle told that bunch that if this gospel be hid from you, it's hid unto them that are lost and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not less. The lights. Everybody shout light. The light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is shining in their heart. Come on 
with it. 19. Who being past feeling past have feelings. given themselves over unto Have done feeling. what, church? Talk to me. Did the devil overrun them? Did he overpower them? They did what, Sister Jesse? Giving themselves Giving over, themselves over unto lasciviousness. Don't you live like that? Don't you follow that spirit? Hey. To work all uncleanness with greediness. Read it. But ye have not so Son, I want second, second Peter 2 and you, you still, no, give me second Peter. Yeah, second Peter 2 and verse 1. Hey. Come on with it. Come on with it. But ye have not so learned Christ. You didn't get that mess from Jesus. No, sir. No, ma'am. Hallelujah. Read. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him. Read. As the truth is in Jesus. You look this way here. I'm not teaching my opinion. I'm teaching this word here. Why? The word don't lie. And I don't care how a preacher call itself anointed. The flesh ain't got nothing to do with this. This is anointed. This is real. John 6 and 6. My word is spirit and my word is life. It will give you life when you meditate on it. When you surrender to it. When you receive it. You can't get saved until you receive the word. You will be saved, man. Hey. That you put off concerning the former conversation. The former lifestyle. The old man. The old man. The unregenerated man. The man that was after Adam. Everything that came into this world and that comes into the world now, they start out as sinners. You'll be saying mine. Hey. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Read it. And be renewed in the spirit of be your Be what, mind. church? See there? You can't live this life with that same old man. And Satan knows it. That's why he keep pulling at us. Come on. Ain't nobody looking. God looking. Come on with that book. Come on. And that you put on the new man. Read. Which after God is created after in who, righteousness. Church? The new man is created after who? God. In what? In righteousness. And what? True holiness. Now if there's a true holiness, there's a false. And men's are proving that today. I'm talking about in this persuasion. Mixing and mingling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On a national level, on a jurisdictional level, on a district level, and on a local church level. We'll pull people that don't even believe in holiness off and, and put them over the saints. How in the world can somebody that don't believe in holiness teach me anything? Come on out of here. God ain't stupid. He got sense enough to know, amen, pray God, to anoint a servant and put him over his people. Amen. Come on with it. Wherefore, put away lying. Do what? Put away lying. Talking to church folks, lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. Read. For we are members one of another. Lord, have mercy. Read. Be ye angry and sin not. Lord, have mercy. Read. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Read it. Neither give place to the devil. Read. Let him that stole. Where you at, son? Steal no more. Read. Let but him that stole steal. Talk about first of all, steal it. But rather Deacons and preachers, amen now. Secretaries and everything else and handling money. He's talking about folks steal it. Come on out of here. Lay members stealing from one another. Lay members stealing stuff off their job. Come on out of here. I don't care if it's a pencil. It ain't your pencil. Your money didn't buy it. Stealing time. You go, you working on somebody's job, you go in the bathroom trying to sleep on that man's time, you're a thief. You ain't got to take it. He convicted me, praise God. I thank God for the man of God. Told He preached that and then God said, see there, there it is right there. And I said, God, forgive me. Hey, tell, I tell the truth on me. I know where I come from. God been training me. He been, <laughs> he been training me and teaching me, you honor me when ain't nobody else is around. Why? I'm in you. When I go to the bathroom, I'm taking the Holy Ghost in there with me. Come on out of here. Come on with it. But rather let him labor. Working, working with, with his own hand that he may have to give to him that 
Has not. Read. Come on with it. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of now your mouth. Now, who is he talking to, lying, cheating, deceiving? Come on with it. But that which is good to the use of edifying. Read. That it may minister grace, grace to the hearer. Read. And grieve not the Holy Spirit grieve of God. Grieve not. Whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Read it. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with ma all my, malice. My God, read. And be ye kind one to another, read. tender hearted, read. forgiving one another. Read. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Has done what? Come on with it. Be ye therefore followers of God. Five and one, right? And, yes. And read. And children. And what church? I told you we're going to do a whole lot of reading, amen, yeah. pray God. Why? You know what I'm doing now? I'm doing now. I'm discipling you. And what we're reading now, you won't never be able to stand before God. Say, God, I didn't know. Come on with it. I'm getting clean this morning. Read. And walk in love. Walk in what, church? Read. As Christ also has loved us. Read. And has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. Sacramento. Six and four. Come on with it. But fornication and all uncleanness and uh, covetousness. Let, let it, it not, not notice. Let it not be once named. Be among once you. named among you that's in my house. You saints that's called by my name. Don't let it be what? Name. Let it not be once named. Once among named you. among you as becoming saints. Who are we? How did we become saints? Through Jesus Christ. Read. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talk, <sighs> nor jesting. Child, I was just kidding. I hear you. But remember now, Matthew, I believe it's Matthew, uh, uh, praise the Lord, 1036. He said, every hour of word we speak, we're going to give account of in the last day. Amen. I was just kidding, child. I was just kidding. You poking fun of folks. and all. Come on with it. Come on with it. But rather giving a thanks. Read. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, mm -hmm. nor unclean now, person. Underline that in your Bible, that you know. Everything now that he begins to talk about, he's talking about you, you ain't going. When Jesus comes, you're not going. Read. Nor covetous man who is an idolater. Idolater. Read. Come on. Has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. That's it. What verse is that? That's five. Read. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Read, because, because of these things come the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You can't be a child of disobedience without knowing what to obey. Amen. Come on with it. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Read. For ye were sometimes dark. Y'all look this way. Look this way. You would think he's talking about folks outside of the church house. But these saints in all of them churches, they were babes. Being taught by the apostles. Teaching them how to live. And that if you're going to leave this world when Jesus comes for his church, this is where you better find yourself in the scriptures. Read it. But now ye light in the Lord. We're what? Light. Walk as children of light. Read. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness all and righteousness. All goodness and all righteousness. And truth. Read. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. That is now. And have that, huh? You got to prove. In other words, take God's word because you know he proves of that. He approves of that. You take God's word, you live God's word, and God approves us. And this is why a lot of folks praying and then God ain't studying them. Hallelujah. Come on with it. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works he of darkness. He keep telling them, I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your twin brother. When you get saved, you cannot let them influence you to come on. Don't be so harsh. And in one case, and in the other case, they say, you're trying to be holding them down. No, we better be like holy like he tell us to be. Hallelujah. Hold that suggestion. In 1 Peter 3.13, he said, Gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As obedient children, not fashion yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which is called you is holy. 
So be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who would not respect a person, judges according to every man's work. Pass the time of your sojourn in here in fear. We ain't supposed to be scared of God. I'm talking about church folks. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with such corruptible things as silver and gold. You couldn't buy your salvation. But you were redeemed by the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without spot or blemish. Hallelujah. This is in the book. This is in now. Come on. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. So just I want to say, 2 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. No, no. Come on, son. Corinthians 6, 14. Yeah, give me that first verse because you know you can receive the grace of God in vain. I'm talking to church folks now. You can get saved and then live directly opposed to the word of God and the, the salvation of God, the grace of God don't apply to you no more. Don't you let nobody lie to you. Once saved, always saved. This reads different. A whole lot of different. Read. We then as workers together Read. with him. Beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. What did the book say, church? You can receive the grace of God in vain. Read. Come on. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. Read. And in the day of salvation, I have I succored, have succored you. I have upheld you. Read it. Behold, now is the accepted time. When is the accepted time to get saved? Read. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Read. Giving no offense in anything. Not see there. He's concerned about them misrepresenting Jesus Christ and bringing shame on the ministry. Give no offense. Read, son. Giving no offense to anything. Giving in, no in offense. Anything, in anything. That the ministry be That the blamed. ministry of Jesus Christ be not blamed. Now, if we could get, us preachers could get that down then I guarantee you people have a whole new attitude. I'm talking about sinners that have a whole new attitude about the church. If, amen. We weren't doing stuff to bring shame on Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pick it up in that 14th verse, son. Corinthians 6, 14. Read. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, we got a whole lot of New Testament teaching telling us that we cannot mix and mingle with the world. Y'all look this way, every one of you, and God never has ordained that the world be brought off into the church. You don't get rich preaching like this, but I guarantee you one that you can lay down and sleep at night. Come on with it. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? Fellowship, read. And what communion had light with darkness? No communion, read. And what concord had Christ with Belial? What does that mean? You can't mix God with the, with the world, amen. You can't mix the world with God. Come on out of here. There's a controversy about praise dancing. And folks, it's talking about David choreography. David was filled with the Holy Ghost and he wasn't trying to entertain the folks. Word. No, sir. I don't care which way you turn it, amen, pray to God. That's entertainment drawn out the world to bring it over into God's house and men and women, amen, you discourage the saints and pray to God then if they try to say something, you try to silence them. The devil is alive. The only thing that this church and any, any, this pranker can do is put me out of this denomination. But thank God I ain't going to heaven being no pastor. I'm going to heaven being a saint. You believe in Simon? And praise God when he said, you stand on the wall. You point out to the people what's right and what's wrong. But we, we didn't compromise. So, you know, you get to mix and mingle with folks and you pick up their attitude. That's how he got on them folks in, in Psalm 50. They had the wrong attitude about coming to bringing that. They were bringing often, but they weren't thankful and they did not reverence God. Hallelujah. Come on with it. Be not ugly with your open unbelievers. And what fellowship have rights been on right? Read, read, son, read. Where you pick, pick it up. Where, tell them where you stopped at. Read. 2 Corinthians 6, 15. And what concord had Christ with Belial? No Or what part had he that believed with, with an, an With an unbeliever. Read. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? No agreement. For Hold it. You don't, wait, we don't do the junk that we did over there over yonder. That's what he's telling them. You don't worship God like you worship your idols. No, sir. 
No, son. You notice in the New Testament teaching, he talks about fornication all through them epistles. You notice that? Because that's how they worship their, their God. They had punks off in the groves, licking on one another. Come on out of here. They had temple prostitutes. Yes, sir. Brother, he telling us, amen, pray God, there's a difference between holy and unholy, and there's a difference between God and the devil, and don't you mix and mingle. You believe in shame on! Hallelujah! Already, it was already pointed out to me that folks ain't going to like you because of what you stand for. I don't care. Nobody here and nobody outside this church and nobody on the face of this earth got anywhere to put me. Jesus told me and I feel nothing and nobody. He said, don't fear him that can kill a body but ain't, can't, can't do nothing else. He said, I'll tell you who to fear. And this fell from the lovely lips of the Son of God. I'll tell you who to fear. Fear him who after he has killed has power to cast both soul and body in hell. Yay! I say, you fear him. Understand this. As long as you're a part of this body over here, people do things against you. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't take it the wrong way. The Bible says that there must be heresies in the church. Hallelujah. Come on with it. And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? Read. For ye are the temple of the living God. There it is right there now. There it is right now. Signifying what he told that bunch of men, pray God, in the first chapter, in the, in the first Corinthians 6 and 19, ain't it now? We're the temple of the Holy Ghost. We're, read, son. As God has said, I will dwell in them. That's a promise. And walk in them. Now, that's only to the saints. I'll walk in them. Read. And I will be their God. Read it. And they shall be my people. They shall be my what, church? Now, if we don't obey God, whose people are we? Y'all scared to say something. Read it. Wherefore, come out from among them. Do what? Them. Come out from among now, them. Now, here's one verse, amen, pray God, that nobody can refute, that he ain't going to mix with the world. And because he don't mix with the world, we don't mix with the world. I'm going to tell it. From the TV shows you watch, they give you ideas. To the music you listen to that give you ideas that are directly opposed to God. And if you feel with God's spirit, he'll convict you. But you know, we can be part of that bunch in 1 Timothy 4 who can have their conscience seared. Hallelujah. Well, it, don't, it, don't, it ain't as bad as you say it is. Come on with it, son. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. If you do what I told you, and come on out. Then what? Said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Read. And I will receive you. Our hands are filthy. Why? Because our mind is filthy. Come on with it. And will be a father unto you. A father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters. See there. Now he's not sexist. If he was sexist, brother John, he would say, you'll be my sons. Period. But he said, you, you do do this, and this will make you ready when I come for the church, when I come for my bride. You come out, and you do this. You'll be my sons and daughters, said who? The Lord Almighty. Tell them in verse 1. Read. Having therefore these promises dearly beloved. So, so Jesse, I want Philippians 1 and 20, and you stay right there. Come on with it, son. Having therefore these promises dearly beloved. Let us cleanse ourselves. Let us cleanse ourselves. That's to put away people that you know ain't right. Get off and around them. Put away the activities you got that you know you've been convicted of. You put why? Because there's a that, that, that there's a reward for this. There's a reward for doing this. Hallelujah. Come on with it. Come on with it. From our filthiness of the flesh. And, and spirit, spirit. And spirit. And spirit. Perfect. Perfecting holiness and doing the fear what? of God. When he saved us, he tell us in Peter to be, be holy because he's holy. He, he's talking about us doing what he said in that sixth verse, and then we can perfect holiness in us. Why well, bless his name? In other words,
word, you don't get saved and come in and sit down and soak up all of this word and don't do nothing with what you hear. Come on with it. Give me that seven verse one more time. Verse seven and one. Yeah, seven and one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves let us from do what, all church? filthiness. All filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness. Perfecting holiness in, in the, the fear of God. Fear of God. Now y'all look this way, every one of you. When we obey God by putting away the things that dishonor him and then putting on the new man, the things that, that please him, you know what? And Satan knows this. That makes you fearless. You don't feel nothing about what the enemy is trying to do to you. Amen. You know you win. You win it now. Y'all, every one of you look this way here. If you in, if you in Satan's control, he ain't going to do too much. As soon as you come on the Lord's side, all hell break loose. Now, what is that for? To get you to backslide? Hallelujah. Wake up. Wake up. I look at trials as if I know I'm doing right by God or the devil wouldn't be bothering me. He wouldn't be whispering in my ear. Oh, hey, why don't you quit preaching all of that? Look at some of the rest of them. They got great swelling cries. Well, God, Holy Ghost, always bring me back to Matthew 7, 13. The way into heaven is straight. <laughs> And narrow. You talking about everybody got a crowd? They ain't with God. I ain't say no such thing. Don't you go away from here lying about that. Hallelujah. Because the truth draws crowds too. Hallelujah. But in many cases, in the local churches, people won't take the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Watch it now. This verse right here, I've, I've preached and quoted many times the last month, month and a half. So right here, Philippians 1 and verse 20. That in nothing I shall be ashamed. Paul the apostle wrote them Romans in 1, chapter 1 and verse 60. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because the gospel is the power to change men's lives. Come on with it. In nothing shall... Read! According to my earnest expectation. This is what I'm expecting. This is why I don't pay no attention when the devil start coming against me. I'm expecting Jesus to come for me. And I'm not going to let the devil hoodwink me and get me, quote, down in the dumps. I want Revelation 19. So come on with us. And my hope that in nothing. In I what, church? In nothing shall I be ashamed. Ashamed. Read. But that with all both. With all what, church? How many bold? Well, no. You know whether you're bold in Jesus or not. Uh, so, Jewel, I'm going to share something with you. Anytime you do anything and you come around folks and stuff, right, especially when they know you say, and especially you're a preacher, the cussers will start cussing even more. See how you're going to react? And then holy, and I got first time when I got saved, and praise God, I was exposed to that. I, hey, look here, I, I was rough. Hey, Amen. I didn't know how to take it. I'm a new saint, fresh out the box. And then God told me, taught me through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He said, "You don't answer a fool according to his folly." But hey, Amen. Just start talking about Jesus. Yes, sir. Don't you worry. He'll give you what to say. Hallelujah. And pray God, you start talking about Jesus and the cusses will start thinning out. Hallelujah. What they say, this is a Holy Ghost takeover. I take over the break room. I take, oh, bless his name. Huh? Read it. As and nothing shall, I, shall be a saint. But with all boldness as always. See, he wasn't summertiming. He wasn't bold when he come to church. And a mouse when he get outside the church. Read. So now also Christ shall be magnified in, in my body. My body. Whether it be by life or by death. All right, y'all look this way here. This is what I was telling you. When you get this part right, when you live to leave here, when you live it for God and holy, and you, amen, expecting Jesus Christ to come, it don't make no difference what come your way. Sure enough, you feel nothing. You feel nobody. Why? Because in an instant. This thing is going to take place. Come on with it. Then in nothing shall I be ashamed. Read. Come on. 
that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. For me to live is Christ. And to and die is gain. Now the man ain't afraid that he wasn't afraid to die. Now, what's the thing that people scared of? They scared of dying. Show sure enough. You know why? Because you're not perfect in love. You're not walking with God. Amen. He that amen, love, amen, pray God, love is perfecting in us. Amen. But fear, perfect love, cast out fear. Fear of what? Fear of dying, leaving this world without God. You may be saying, God. Drop down to that 28th verse. That in nothing terrified by, read. And in nothing terrified by your adversary. Read. Which is to them an evident token of Come on, y'all, read with the preacher. Read with the preacher. Come on with it. But to you of salvation and that of God. No, for, okay. Come on. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Hold what you got right there. Now, what's in living holy? Everybody ask yourself, what's in this for me? It's got to get personal to you. What is in this thing for me? Stay where you at, son. So, Jesse, I want Titus 2 and verse 11. I want that right now. Everybody take a deep breath. The grace of God. See, we hollering by grace. We don't even realize, and amen, pray God, the grace teaches us how to live in this wicked world. The grace of God which brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to do what? That denying ungodliness. That denying ungodliness in our lives. And worldly lust. And denying worldly lust in our lives. Preacher! You got to get it right. Come on with it. We should live soberly. We should live. We should live. Soberly, righteously, righteously, and godly. Where? Well, in this present world. Because if you don't live it in this world, you're not going to the other world. He ain't talking about you working your way to heaven. He's talking about you living your way there. You may be sermon. Read. Looking for that blessing. Doing what? Here's the purpose. Here's the privilege. Here's the perks of living holy, living godly. Living righteously. Here's the image of looking for that blessed hope. hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Read. Who gave himself for us that he now, might now, redeem hold it. us. Y'all read with me? Because he's talking about the sacrifice of God, sealing the covenant, and then he's talking about us. Fulfilling our part in this covenant so that we can be ready that we're, while we're looking for that blessed old brother, sister, he that shall come will come and he will not tarry. First Corinthians 15, 51, I behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye when the last trump sound. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Please. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. That he might redeem us from all iniquity, living in sin. And purify unto, and purify himself, unto himself a peculiar people. This is the purifying process. When we deny ungodliness and word of lesson that we live soberly, righteously, and godly. This is the purifying process to be ready when he gathers the saints. Read. Unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Ro uh, uh, Revelation 19. Here's what's in this for us. Read. Revelation. Give me 19. that fifth verse, 19 and 5. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God. Praise our God. Are ye his servants? Are ye his servants? I'm one. And ye that fear. Hey, we'll read everything that met Jesus Christ in the mid air when he came for his church. And now we'll read what they're going to be doing. Amen. Pray God during the tribulation period. Read it. All ye his servants and ye that fear him. Read. Both small and great. Read it. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. Yes. And as the voice of many waters. Yes. And as the voice of mighty yes. thunder, Saying hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. He's in power. He's in authority. He. Let us be glad and rejoice and yes. give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. Look this and way. Look this way. He's talking about every saint. We're looking in the future now. 
Every saint that trusted God down through the ages, they're there. They're there. I'm planning on making it. How, how about you? Notice what they're doing now. They're praising God. Why? They glad. They glad. Hey, I made it. Through hard times, I made it. Come on with it. His wife had made herself rich. His who, church? Who is his wife? The church. That he, huh, Ephesians 5, he sanctified and cleansed the church. And he's going to present the church to himself. Read. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine Because I sanctified myself. Because I came out from among the world. Because you sanctify yourself. And come out from the world. God grants us a garment. That garment signifies. You know yeah, you sports folks. How do you identify your team? By the uniform. God got a uniform for the saints. Come on with it. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, fine linen clean and white. And white. Look out all you nasty hearted folks. You're not going to be him. Come on with it. For fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. It's the what church? Read. And he said unto me, write, blessed are they which are called unto the merits of the land. The what church? This is the real blessing that I call. First, he called us out of the world to live for him and brothers and sisters. Then he's going to literally call us out of this world for the reward of being one of that bunch that's sitting at the table. Hallelujah. Y'all, you ain't got to take it. But all through the New Testament, especially in Revelation 13 and 8, there's a book of the Lamb, and it was written before the foundation of the world. See, I'm just fulfilling my destiny. Amen. You're saved. You live saved. You fulfill your destiny. But you know you got a free will. God ain't making us do this. If you want it, you'll do it. If you don't want it, you'll, you know, you'll play around with your soul. Read, read. Come on with it. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Yeah. See, now why would he say that? You ever ask yourself when you read certain things, now why did he say that? Because there's so much counterfeit that had permeated the church in the New Testament. But he said, these are the true sayings of God. He 